We've got excitement here in Studio V because we've got the BYU Athletic Director Tom Holmo with us in Las Vegas as part of our West Coast Conference Basketball Championships coverage. Tom, great to have you with us. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us a day happy, after your birthday. Happy birthday thank yesterday. You. Belated, thank you. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's always great to be in Las Vegas. Uh, when I was a kid in high school, we played in that. Our team from L.A. played in this uh, Christmas holiday tournament, and we'd come up here every year. So basketball in Vegas around uh, tournament time is really great. How does it feel to be 40, Tom? It, feels, <laughs> it felt wonderful <laughs> about 20 years ago. <laughs> oh, good Let, let's talk about your life right now because you were on the uh, NCAA basketball committee the last several years. Now you're not. Um, how much more free time do you have slash how much are you paying attention to all this? My because eyes, you were. My eyes are not bloodshot like they usually are <laughs> more this slim. time of the year. A lot less um, games watched. But it's interesting. Uh, I, I rotated off last year after the Final Four, and I just kind of put it all aside. This basketball season started. I didn't go to all the stacks of um, analysis prior to the season, and then during the season I watched a few games, and I caught, found myself getting pulled in, so I resisted. And then last week I couldn't resist. I had to go to the bubble. You know, ESPN, <laughs> Lenardi, I had to look it all up and see where it is. And I'm glad I'm not on it this year because it looks like the bubble's thick. Oh, yeah, certainly so. So you're not uh, indulging in the team sheets currently? I, I will gaze at the team <laughs> sheets just to see and get a little bit of a feel for it. Okay, right now, in your opinion, if St. Mary's gets to – Tuesday night and plays against Gonzaga. Is this a two-bid West Coast Conference League? Based on how the room was last year, I'd say no. Um, I just say that because I, I can see that the bubble last year was a little thinner, mm -hmm. and St. Mary's right in the thick of things. And this year, that bubble's a lot thicker. And so uh, just from reading what people are saying, it generally doesn't tra change that much. I mean, they if they win the conference, they're in for sure. sure. But I, I just don't know. I can't really predict it. But based on last year, I'd say that. I think last year's St. Mary's team should have been in. But I think last year's St. Mary's team was better than this year's St. Mary's team. Sure. And this year's St. Mary's team is getting more talk. So who knows? Who's on that committee anyway? <laughs> <laughs> All your other friends on the committee are like, hey! Um, and that trends in a direction that perhaps is not uh, favorable towards a team like BYU. It seems like it's getting harder for outside the power six in basketball, you add another league there, to get in. Do you feel like, okay, you've, the, the at-large bid ability is tougher than, say, it was a decade ago? Yes, I, I think you'd have to say that. There's a few things that go into that because a lot of the at-large teams a decade ago are now P6 teams. Those were the teams that were in and now aren't. Um, I think the other thing is just the committee and college basketball in general, not necessarily mid-major fans, are looking to the um, schedule. It's who you win, where you play, who you can beat and where you can beat them. Yeah. And... The P6 teams, I say that because of, you know, say P5, which people understand, people don't understand. The Big East is like a P6. Those, those teams have opportunities each and every week to get quad one or you know, even a little bit beyond that. Where teams in this conference or the Mountain West Conference, some uh, conferences like that, they just don't have the opportunity. And that's a discussion that's ongoing in that committee. Not this week, 365 days a year. And they got to have to figure that out because when the tournament time comes, there's so much discussion. But at the end of the tournament, when that tournament ended last year, we have meetings that go all the way through the summer. And you stay on the committee through that. And we talked and talked and talked about how we can make that better for all of college football, uh, basketball. Teams like BYU and St. Mary's went out and challenged themselves this year, particularly on the road to try and get more quad one opportunities. But they had to play those games majority on the road. So when the schedules get harder for a team like the Cougars or the Gales, when you look at it from an athletic director standpoint, how do you manage expectations or how should you manage expectations knowing that the schedule is harder? And this also applies to BYU football. Correct. I think it's, I like it. I like scheduling up. Most of our teams in at BYU, if you look at soccer, volleyball, a, a number of our sports, they schedule really tough because they know they're going to be in the tournament. 
and they want to get great seeds. If if your if your uh, intention is just to sneak in, then it's somewhat strategic. If you want to go all the way or you want to go deep into that tournament, there's no strategy in it. You just schedule as high as you can because in order to go deep into a tournament, you have to have a good seed. When you look at, I call it Jimmer and Jackson's team, that team had a great seed and they went further than we have in a long time. Yeah, and we talked we talked about it a lot, and I mentioned, hey, you beat a 14, and then you got a you got an upset, so you beat an 11. Like the path was boom, boom. You get it in the Sweet 16. Let's talk about Gonzaga's role in this league. From the league's perspective, it's got to be great, right? You have the number one team in the country, but for the rest of the teams, it's to me, I'm burdened at the beginning of the season, like ah, it's going to be tough to win the league and to get into the NCAA tournament. How do you manage that? Because for the league, it's great, and it, you always have that opportunity to beat them yet you've got to go through them to get to the NCAA tournament now well you do have to go through them there's no question about that and for years and years you have to t turn the table BYU in many sports in the past and currently in some of our sports it's the same thing our women's softball team has won 13 conference titles in a row so it's a similar thing that's where we want to be and in order to be there you got to beat them now everyone knows that we've beaten Gonzaga a couple times and it happens to be up there and in Spokane, but it's rare to do that. And you got to do it and take care of business in the conference and have good non-conference in order to go, you know, deep into the conference and into the NCAA tournament. It feels like BYU's schedule was good enough to perhaps get BYU into the NCAA tournament, but they just need a few more wins. Is that how you feel as a comm former committee member? Yeah, I do think that. I think we did. One of the things that's hard about you know non-P6 uh, conferences is you schedule these very strategically, and then the team that you think was going to be good turns out to not be so good. So you have very, very small room for error when you're scheduling as a mid, you know, mid-major, where. The, the P6s, they don't really have to worry if they make some mistakes along the way. I think Gonzaga is a good example of they schedule up, and people say you can't get games. We can get games. Um, St. Mary's can get games. It's a matter of do you want to play them, and yes, you're going to have to play them on the road. And I think that's what we do in football. Uh, in football, BYU, in order to play some of the real big boys, you either have to go two for one or go there and play a guarantee game, or if you do get a home and home, you got to go there first on their terms. And you in September it, often, right? It. Exactly. Yeah. Well, now and some of the fruits of that are returning uh, with the home schedule this year. It's been a long build for this, but you, uh, you've you got yourself in a position where you have difficult teams that the majority of them are coming to Provo. Yeah, you better be careful what you wish for. It might come true. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming. Yep. Are we going to meet it? Yeah, let's go. Uh, I, I'm thrilled about it. I mean, there's there's some good games coming up down the road, too, but this is one of the years that you could see, oh, if we can get to this year, be healthy, have a little bit more depth, and we're going with some karma, then things are going to be good. And are you asking for the karma right now? Yeah, Is that what you're yeah, always asking for? Let's it. give it the yes, BYU Sports Nation uh, karma then. Yes, yeah, absolutely. A, absolutely. Take the karma and run with that, yeah. baby. All right, I want to ask one more uh, football question, and then uh, I, I don't want to let you go before we talk about BYU women's basketball a little bit as well uh, as far as getting an at-large bid and where they stand. But when, when you schedule tougher, I know that the mark for Bronco Mendenhall and his teams was, hey, win 10 games, be ranked in the top 25, win a Mountain West Conference championship. It, the schedules are harder, just straight up. There are more powerful teams coming down. So how does that expectation shift in your mind? Well, it, it is difficult because you don't have a conference championship to play for. That is one of the, if you're looking at pros and cons, that's one of the negatives about being an independent. So if you take, a, for example, our women's volleyball team, their, one of their major goals is to win the conference. If you win the conference, you're in the tournament. But they've kind of gotten beyond that the last couple of years because they're what? six years in a row in the Sweet 16. Yeah, now let's get to the Sweet 16 so, at least. So you set those higher. Well, so, same thing with now BYU football. You can't the, – the objective isn't to win the tournament. There is no conference championship. So you try to set goals as to be in the top 20, and then from there you try to beat the teams that you're not favored against. And, and then there's the objective to try to get into a higher bowl game. Obviously, if you can be ranked – in the top Sweet 16, like our women's volleyball is, you're going to have an approach every once in a while to get to the Final Four, which we've done now two years. Sure. In the last couple, what, last That's six seasons? Six seasons. Yeah. Two times to the Final Four, which in football, it's hard to equate that to yeah. a tournament because there is none. But 
and and that's one of the things is you could maybe people are saying sometimes say to me hey let's go back let's just go back to the days of winning championships then if you're going to do that i don't think that you can say that you can um regularly have a shot just because you win a championship down here it's like almost like a mid-major you win a championship but you're a you know, 12, yeah. 11 seed. Right. Let's finish with women's hoops. There's a two seed. They wait until Monday. Uh, they're an at-large bid kind of team, according to ESPN's Charlie Cream. What do you think of the women's hoops' chances of making the tournament? I like them. I think they're good. Uh, this, this is the NCAA college basketball tournament. You never know until it is. People say, are they a lock? I would never use the L word. No way. <laughs> you just can't do that. But I think... Do you lock me? <laughs> the way they've played, and I like the fact that they're, they're net or it's RPI, I guess, because it's not net in the women's side, right. is not going to drop as a result of playing in this conference, which it has in the past years. And so the WCC get putting that, having them have a bye to the semis, puts them against a really good team right off the bat. If they can win that, they go up, and then you're in the finals, and then I would say, looks good. Yeah, but you wouldn't use the L word. No. <laughs> Great totally stuff. <laughs> oh, yes, the L word. A new L word. Honey, I like you. Okay, uh, final thing here, Tom. Uh, we just like to remind you that there are exactly how many days until BYU plays Utah? Countdown to the Utes. 174. 174 days away. I was hoping you'd sing with us. I'm not really into the countdown yet. There's a few other things on my plate. <laughs> We're into I, it every day, Tom. I look at it occasionally and am amused by the number. Uh, <laughs> As am I when it's 200 plus. I'm like, what are we doing? <laughs> but it's Utah, so I love it. I love it. Thanks, Tom. Tom. Thanks so much. Appreciate it, Tom.